What's up guys and welcome back to another tutorial. Today we'll be continuing our 2D sync intro and we'll be adding many effects to spice up our intro. Before we continue, let's see what we've achieved in the past two tutorials. So you can see it's a very basic syncing intro without much effect. Only this little flashing and basically just simple pumps and that's all there is to this intro. So, so to make things a little bit different, let's create a new adjustment layer. Right click, new adjustment layer. And this will be called effects. Now to reduce the amount of adjustment layers that we're going to have, we're going to have this one adjustment layer called effects. It's going to hold the majority of our effects. So the first thing we're going to add in is something called wave warp. Search that up in your effects and presets and drag that in. Now what this does, oh my bad, drag that into effects. All right. So you can see that kind of makes a little ripple effect in our text. So we want the width to be much bigger. We don't want it to be that ripply. Maybe around 200 plus, like so. And that's going to basically make a little wavy motion to our text. But this is only going to appear when the sync when the bass drops. So find the part when that drops, as you can see in my text layer in the scale property on the second keyframe here, which is where the beat drops. Click on the effects and click out and then the left square bracket. Or you could just drag it all the way there. Cool. So what that does, right, if you take a little look, we can bring this up a little bit just to save some time. And if you watch that now, just make it a little bit further. Basically, only when the beat drops, it's going to have a nice ripple effect. Just like so. So it looks really cool and I personally love it. So that's one effect down. And we can add another one called S Warp Vortex. Now this is uh, this effect is um, not free. I, I don't think it's free. I don't know. But it is definitely not inbuilt in After Effects. So you got to get it from some other third party website or search up how to get it. It's called the Sapphire plugin. And this includes many effects that are really good for intro, such as S Shake. And this, as you can see on the right hand side, there's a ton of good effects. Probably the best plugins for intros. So, anyways, basically what this does is it's quite common, it's this sort of thing. So, we're good. this is going to be triggered um, on a sound effect that sounds like click. Now, if I play this, you can kind of hear it. Let me see if I can get that um, sound. I really love this effect. I use it in many of my intros. Alright, so if I wait for a little second. Alright. Right here. If you could hear it, it was like. Kind of like that. If you. Um, let's go from here. Right here. So let's just do a little estimate here. And let's set a keyframe for vortex start. Click the stopwatch, click U on effects to bring up all our keyframes. And we're going to move a couple of frames forward and make the next one 77. And then move another couple of frames forward and make that one negative six so it has a little bit of an overshoot. And move it even more ahead. And actually, we can spread this out just a little more. One more, and we'll make that back to zero. So highlight everything, right click and click F, uh, keyframe assistant in F9. And if we RAM preview this, so you can see it looks really nice. Cool. 
Now, that's another cool fact. Now we can add something called sawtooth. Um, this is once again using warp wave. So wave warp. And if we put that in. Now, instead of using sine, we're going to use sawtooth. Now, this effect wouldn't be that obvious in our composition due to the fact that there's not much to it, it's just some text. However, if it was an actual composition, like a video of some sort or like 3D animation, then it would be really um, outstanding. So if we go to, let's show this, um, around here, let's see, let's drag that out a little bit. Let's put it in this, this drop right here, around the six second mark. And what we're going to do is, on right here, we're going to set a keyframe on the second bit width warp, on the height. Now one thing is to note is that the width is once again going to be around fifth, around there. Height, make that zero at the start. Okay, and click U so we can see that keyframe just right here, I believe. And then move a couple of frames forward. And then make this back to 10. And then move another couple of frames forward and make that back to zero. And then make that easy ease. So now if we watch this, let's bring this up a little bit so we can focus on that area. You can see it's quite subtle. Yeah, it's a little too subtle. Let's actually drag this all the way to this base, base drop and move this right in the center. So if we play that now, yeah, it's quite subtle, but you know, it gives it something. Cool, so that's that. Now, the final thing we're going to add is motion tile. So motion tile is again another very commonly used effect in intros, but what's really great about it is it requires no external plugins. So search it up called motion tile, and that's gonna be on our very last base uh, beat. So in here you wanna say keyframe the width and the height to be one hundred at the very start. So right here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move it to the, in the second last because this takes a while. All right. And then around here, make this around 21 for both of them. Like so. And then around here, we'll make that back to 100 for each of them. So if we take a little watch of this. That's basically it. That, that's basically the effect. And in fact, we can move that a little forward. Cool. Now we can hold, uh, select everything, right click and click F9. And cool. So we can select this. And of course, we can edit some graph values. Make sure you're editing the speed graph. And how you want this to be is kind of like this. So drag this one a little bit like this. Sorry, other way on the right. Because we want that to slowly increase in speed. And then we want to do the exact same thing, but on the left hand side this time. So drag this a little more this way. So it's going really fast, really, really fast, and then slow down. And do the same for the height. So once you grab this, and you want to drag this like this, I think. Sorry, I get confused easily with this sort of thing. And do the same for here. All right, cool. Now I've got that done, we can watch that to see how that looks. Let's click B for beginning to bring that up and we can watch that. Oh, 
Oh, alright, that's looking pretty fast. Yep, so we can probably spread that out a little bit more. Let's grab everything, put it, put it around there. And just scatter them out evenly. Let's see if this makes any difference. Not much, still. So. Let's grab that out. Let's go with this. That should look better. Yeah, so it requires a lot of trial and error. There we go, that looks quite a little bit better. Now we can also add something called, if you watched my previous tutorial, Optic compens Compensation. And we can click Reverse Lens Distortion. And at the very start of our tile width keyframes, click on the field of view. Alright, and then in the middle, make that around, um, drag that out, like that, one, around 100, and then at the end, make that zero. Cool. Let's play that. Let's see how that looks. <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. Very simple. In fact, if you want, you could actually make this a lower value, like maybe 15. Also. Yeah. And of course, since it's a lower value, it's kind of better if we can spread them out even more. Cool. So that's that. I think that's pretty much it. Let's watch the whole thing one more time. Hopefully we didn't miss anything. That's It's looking pretty good so far, the intro. And I hope you guys have learned something from this video, I guess. <laughs> Alright, cool. Nice. Let's bring it back up here. Uh, we can adjust this just a little bit more. I think this is a pretty big part of the intro. Let's try this out. I feel as though the beat is coming lowly. Yeah, the X more like a, like a slingshot. Alright, cool autosave. Alright, well, I think that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll leave a video of the final, um, final product. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And maybe there'll be a next one. Catch you guys next time. Peace.